Now, let's talk about the comments. <laughs> let's go through the comments, boys. There are, there are seats to are our, being there read. Are seats. Here we go. So this is the <clears throat> instant reaction back on July 1st. This is the instant reaction of Rockets fans at the thought of getting Dylan Brooks. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. What is going on, everyone? You are listening to The Summit, State of Mind, the podcast of Dream Shakes and Step Backs, and everything Houston Rockets, presented to you by the Apollo Podcast Network. It's Kenny the Commission here. And I'm the GM, JP. And you can follow us on all, all social media platforms at JP underscore Mirabueno, at Summit Commission, at Summit SOM Pod, and at Apollo NBA, and at Apollo HOU. We totally nailed the new intro. Yeah, I definitely did. Definitely did. I only stumbled slightly. I was a little late in my entrance, but no How one about would notice. Stumbling slightly out of the gate just to come on strong late. Sounds a lot like a Houston Rockets team. Touche. Let's fucking go. Houston well, Rockets are two and three currently. How yo, are you doing, man. good sir? Uh, the Rockets have are we won. Lit up? Are we litty? We're, we're litty. The Rockets have won <laughs> two games since the last time we were uh, re- recording in uh, our wonderfully humble studio over here. Uh, the Rockets are two and three. And let me tell you something, man. Like uh, the way that it happened was quite magnificent. I would say. I would think like along the lines of it, just like two wins, but not just two wins, but like two convincing wins, <laughs> at least like yeah, from the way that I true. saw, yeah. like, oh my gosh, which we're going to go into in just a minute. But before we do also be sure to super kick that subscribe button one time on YouTube at Apollo HOU for all the best Houston sports content that Houston has to offer. We're talking Rockets, Astros, Texans. Once again, super kick that subscribe button one time so you can watch our beautiful faces live. And if you think we're ugly, then you can watch our ugly faces live and make fun of us. Regardless, <laughs> I'm good with I'm good with this each, each situation. GM recording on a Sunday uh, noon time here. I had my morning coffee. Mm-hmm. How are you doing, good sir? I'm good. Uh, you know, we slept in. It was uh, daylight. Is it daylight savings or no, daylight saving time? Okay, over so it, currently. it we felt back it's over. an hour. Yeah, so it ended. And your boy slept in. Still slept in. Uh, What's sleeping in for you, by the way? Waking, What's like up, a good waking up at 8 a.m. is sleeping in for me. I'm an old man that works at 6 a.m. Monday through Friday, so waking up at 8 a.m. is a freaking blessing, if you ask me. I think like for you sleeping at 8 a.m. I mean sleeping until 8 a.m. is a, is pretty much a pipe dream. Uh, for me, I pretty much wake up around seven typically. So me waking up late would be around closer to nine. I'm deep into work by already 7 a.m. So. Trust well, that me. sounds like a you problem. That doesn't sound like a me problem. Yeah, touche. <laughs> Look, G- hey, GM, let's go ahead and talk about the Houston Rockets. Dude, we fucking won. Dude, we, don't, we haven't just won. We're on a two-game win streak. Yeah, we, we're, we we're, on a, we're on a win streak. What are we doing? We're five games into the season. Five games into the season. What are we doing? We're winning. Bro, we're fucking winning. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm super psyched here. Um, if you follow us like on Twitter, especially if you follow us on Twitter, you'll get like a good heads up on everything, dude. I am ecstatic at the play currently. Mm-hmm. Like, there's so much to unpack here, so much to talk about. The Houston Rockets. From last time we recorded, uh, we went 0 and 3. Sky's falling. Not sure how to react. Um, there's a obviously a lot of a lot of moving parts. However, the Houston Rockets did come through and come through in convincing fashion uh, for. Game number four, they went ahead and beat the Sacramento Kings, 107 to 89. And then we can't forget about last night's game, obviously. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. No, 107 to 89 was last night's game. I do apologize. And then the game on Wednesday was 128 to 119. GM, the Houston Rockets are starting to put... Uh, the pieces together to become a team that is more than capable of holding their own. And I think that's what we're starting to see now. I'm I'm, I'm truly ecstatic of the play that I've seen so far. Bench obviously being still a weak point. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not going to excuse them by any means because that bench is still fucking weak and they really need to fix that short. Yeah, that they're, just, they're missing Tara Eason for and sure. And Amen Thompson. And Amen Thompson. Yeah. I mean, that's basically your bench minutes. But GM... What's been your overall thoughts? Look, we when last episode we were 0 and 3, skies falling here. Now we come back with our next episode. We're 2 and 3 and everything's looking good and I hope y'all are uh, enjoying it as much as we are because we're on a fucking win streak right now. GM, overall thoughts on the last two games and kind of like what's what what's been like some bright spots for you? 
There's a lot of bright spots. I mean, the play of Fred Van Vliet in both games, the guy went off in both evenings. Even though he shot 7 for 22 last night, he still had 12 assists. That matters. The assist totals matter. And let me tell you, the turnovers. Two turnovers to 12 assists, that's a 6 to 1 assist to turnover ratio. We could have only wished for that. You're telling me a point year. guard's on the team now, officially? Yeah, kind of crazy, point guard on the right? Kind of crazy. But, I mean, obviously, you know, every, everyone wants to, you know, we can talk about Al P and how well he's playing. We can dive into Jabari Smith Jr., but we should probably dig into first. Who is it, Ken? Our uh, Oh, our villain. Our villain. Our villain, Dylan Brooks. Y'all, by the way, you can buy our merch at ApolloHOU.store. I'm going to put, uh, probably going to put something in between us right now probably mm-hmm. so you can at least see the shirt loud live and in color it's available with many assorted colors with a little bane mask action got to because he's not just a villain he's the villain for the rest of the league so be sure to check that out at apollo hou.store gm I'm... i got something to say i got some sam dylan brooks let, the world, let, dylan let brooks. the world know man okay when the signing went down mm-hmm. in june yeah when he verbally agreed to the contract I remember vividly, we were at studio, mm-hmm. ran back to y'all in the room, because I think we were uh, we were streaming, we were doing something, ran back to y'all. Probably watching the wrestling. Room. Probably watching wrestling. We, we definitely were watching wrestling. Mm-hmm. Oh, Money in the Bank, it was Money in the Bank. Yeah. That's what we were watching. So I run back and I'm like, y'all, we just got Dylan Brooks. And the collective, what? Why? Yeah. The, and 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 that is not just the collective agreement amongst a, a GM, and I think Dex was there too, amongst them. But it, it was kind of a microcosm of the entire of most of the fan base of a guy that was not respected, cared for, yeah. or uh, not believed in. Because we thought when Dylan Brooks entered the equation, guys, Dylan Brooks was known as a head case. Uh, a shit talker with no merit. Remember when we signed him? Like he had the whole issue with LeBron on the back end. Then they got molly whopped, and he didn't take a single interview. Mm-hmm. So you know he he took he didn't take the L on the chin. He took the he took the L and he fucking ran away. I mean we're gonna yep. call a spade a spade here, which is fine. Yeah. Low field goal percentage, non like shooting efficiency. It was on an all time high. Like he's he can score. We knew he brought defense, but we didn't know what he was capable of, and so that's why not a lot of people <coughs> wanted him. Yeah, I was one of the I was one of the few, the proud, the Marines, that was fully invested in Dylan Brooks because I saw what he brought to the table. Guys, what are we doing here? I mean, as as, as someone Brooke, that wasn't yeah. the biggest Dylan Brooks guy, I can pr- proudly and tell you say that I'll gladly eat my crow. There's nothing good about being wrong in a good way. And a lot of people can be uh, get some slice of humility in that world, but I'll tell you this: I'll be the first to tell you. If I'm wrong, I will tell you. And you know, gladly say that I was wrong about being upset about Dylan Brooks joining our team. I'm very happy that he's a part of our team. I mean, the guy has been absolutely a culture setter in terms of what. And he's that's brought. exactly so, what I, that's exactly what I called him out to be. GM, yeah. can I give you? Can I drop a little knowledge here? Can I drop some stats? Drop One it. time for you, boy. Drop Look, it Dylan me, Brooks, guys, in five games, 35 minutes a game, mm-hmm. 18 points a game, mm-hmm. 60% from the field, 60, 6-0, six, 60% from three, six zero, highest percentage in the league That's so amazing. far. Yeah. 4.4 rebounds, 2.4 assists, 1.6 steals. What the fuck are we doing, guys? 60% from three. He carried us down the stretch. Like he took what could have been like a seven to eight, maybe like a seven point lead to eight point lead against the Sacramento Kings, ballooning it to a 17 to 18 point lead based on a couple of three Z hits, a couple of momentum shifting plays that he made. Guys, this is why Dylan Brooks is fucking here. Yeah. This is what he provides. Like I am shocked at the fact that um it's I'm shocked at the fact that the fan base like look I, I was a big Dylan Brooks fan not even me being a mm-hmm. Dylan Brooks fan could dream that he would be performing not just at this rate but also at this level dude you know all all this tells me motherfucker needs to keep playing for Team Canada every summer. I think that's what we need. I <laughs> no, think we need true. a Team Canada training camp yeah. every time. Because I don't know what the fuck mm-hmm. happened. I don't know what's in Canada's water. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what Michael's secret stuff they gave him. But motherfucker has been rolling. And GM, I will say this right out of the gate. Yeah. Canada for most improved. Absolutely. He, by he's, far. he's definitely by far. Canada for most improved. Uh, you know, obviously, Max, 60, 60% it, from three is probably not sustainable. Uh, for speak for man. yourself, GM. But hey, 
He gonna I'll, break the record. I'm kidding. Yeah. No, I'm gonna say <laughs> this. We're all in. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm easily gonna say this. Uh, you can tell that Dylan Brooks has learned from the sins of his past in terms of the way he played in Memphis. Uh, he's taking the shots that are given to him, but he's been more aggressive. But he's been selective in his moments. Uh, he hasn't done anything detrimental in terms of his offensive play, which is exactly the issue that was transpiring in Memphis, and that was the thing, you know. And then with the way that he's playing now under the likes of a coach like Ime Udoka, uh, you can tell that Ime trusts him for whatever that he brings to the table, and he knows that he's going to play hard and give it 110%, you know. Uh, for Dylan, that's huge. Uh, a vote of confidence. Someone that needs that in order to succeed. And playing with these young fellas, being someone that's considered a veteran, a leader. Uh, Dylan had that responsibility in Memphis, too. But it was a different, different team in Memphis. Right. This team is obviously more than willing to learn and to understand and see what it's like to play under, uh, or, sorry, not, excuse me, not playing under, playing with the likes of a Dylan Brooks and a Fred Van Vliet. Uh, I think it's inspiring, motivating to see someone that plays this hard on the defensive end and the way that he plays defense so menacing. Uh, for these young guys to see that, did you see? I'm it's sorry, I don't, I don't mean to interrupt, but did you see like a video went viral last night mm -hmm. of uh, Dylan Brooks pregame, and Staring. you see the Sacramento Kings warming up, and you just see, and I kid y'all not, guys, this is like a literal shot for shot motion of what he did. He went like Kings are warming up, shooting around, doing their thing, they're laughing, and then on the far side of the floor, you just see Dylan Brooks like this. <laughs> I blinked, but he didn't blink. Like yeah. it was staring into your soul. Like I was like, dog, if I stare too long. Motherfucker's gonna like, you know, he's gonna shang sung my ass, dude. Like, I didn't know what I was gonna expect, dude. The fact that he took this sign, we we took the signing, we took the rap, we took the rap, the Rockets took the rap because they knew what they were getting. Obviously, mm -hmm. they're gonna take a flyer on him for what he was gonna for the, the, all the stuff I stated earlier. Yeah, but look, it's all it's all paying dividends now. Four years of eighty sounded bad, but I'm telling you right now, the totality of that contract and towards the end of that contract with the new TV deal on the horizon. That deal is going to look like a fucking bargain. I'm telling you now. Yeah. For what he provides, four years, 80, as a as a three and as initially at worst a three and D player now, mm -hmm. now essentially yeah. is going to be a steal of what the going market's going to be later on. Mm -hmm. So, GM, I want to do something a little fun with you. I, I you know just it. for fun, just because you know I'm I'm a salty fan myself, and mm -hmm. I just like a you know I'll admit when I'm wrong, guys. I'll admit when I'm wrong. But if I'm right, I will be insufferable. So. In the essence of being right, there's two things that I want to do with the GM right now. One, we're going to do the first thing right now. I do want to talk about uh, we when we signed Dylan Brooks, I had a graphic teed up and ready. Mm -hmm. I posted the graphic. I said, here we go. I said, Dylan Brooks chooses Houston. Dylan Brooks has committed to a four-year, $80 million contract with the Rockets. Now. Let's talk about the comments. <laughs> Let's go through the comments, boys. There are, there are seats to are our, being there read. Are seats. Here we go. So this is the instant reaction back on July 1st. This is the instant reaction of Rockets fans at the thought of getting Dylan Brooks. One person says, we paid 80 for a 3 and D. That's one of the worst three-point shooters in the league. <laughs> Another God. Instagram handle goes, FML. Another Instagram handle is doing this emoji. <sighs> <laughs> uh, hang on what's another one? Oh, uh, another instagram handle i'll just start calling it blaine i'm just gonna start calling him out says well at least we get the good db because we won't make the playoffs three skull emojis uh, <laughs> jesus fernando goes oh god no <laughs> smh hand hand overhead four years says cardsologist 77092 underscore says, hell nah, fam. This dude is bogus as hell. Aiden underscore Murph 12 Ooh. goes, why? Milo underscore Steel says, fucking embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Okay. And then underscore 22 Lone Wolf. I don't understand why we have this. It said, F the Lakers. <laughs> I, I guess maybe because he talks shit to the Lakers. I guess because maybe. maybe. I think, I think you know, I some know. fans just. Have a bigger hate for the Lakers. I, I Colin, Colin Baguette goes, great last name, by the way. This Baguette. is the guy who talked all that shit then lost. God. 511 Fabworks, three laughing emojis, clown organization. 
And I'm going to end it with three last ones with Panchirio, Thick Nick both going, no! <laughs> and Jake Calhoun with three throw up emojis. Guys, and that's a bulk of what those comments were. Uh, they were all negative. We had a handful of people going, oh, yeah, no, you'll come back here when yeah. he actually does and plays well. Fact of the matter is that he was not an overwhelmingly uh, positive signing. Yeah. So that's point number one. So I wanted to at least bring that up to you because mm-hmm. I just think that's hilarious. I think that's hilarious. Actually, and if you were called out on that, I do apologize. It's not I, – I just wanted to enjoy it. I thought it would have been fun. And, uh, you know, just to see the immediate reactions from where we were back in July all the no, way up no, to people November. stand on your comments. If you're really grossed out, let's see how grossed out you are now. <laughs> Yeah, grow stuff now. Talk yeah, about throw it. up on Twitter. Go ahead. Let's talk tag about us, it. Tag us. Tag us. Talk. Let's talk about it. GM. Oh, speaking of talk about, I do want to talk about. I do want to talk about. It. I said two things. Remember? Yeah. So one thing I want to talk about this thing number two. GM, we are four points away from your ass fucking doing the Dylan Brooks dance. Yeah. He had twenty six. Yeah, it could have oh, happened. I it could have happened expeditiously. But. I put that shit on Twitter. I was like, it could have Dylan. Happened. All we need is four more points, dog. I literally, when you said not nah, not happening yet, did you see what I commented after? I literally commented after and I said. With the Cody Rhodes, Dylan Brooks, finish the story. Drop 30 points because we made a bet. You had to drop the Cody Rhodes gif. It's a finish the story. Finish the story. Because... Full, this, full, full this disclaimer, is long my favorite term, wrestler. This is, yeah, that's why I love doing it. It's, I think it's hilarious <laughs> because I'm talking shit to you in the process. Long-term yeah. booking here. Since June, the GM has been saying he has not wanted Dylan Brooks here in Houston. Yeah. He, is, he will not do the Dylan Brooks dance. If he scores 30, oh. he will do it on video. I will, it will be me, GM, DJ, maybe even Dex. We're all going to go in front of Toyota Center, and we are going to fucking film this whole thing. Oh, God. With you in the front. I didn't know it was like yes. that. With you in the front. <laughs> you will do it. And I don't want no half ass. I, I didn't agree no, to do this not, in front of Toyota Center. Yeah, we're going to do it in front of Toyota Center. I did Center. not agree to do He's this. He's going to do it in front of Toyota Center. did not. He, you can't half ass it either. We can't have like a... We can't have like a a frown like no no i need you fully in character i need you to be like i need you to bounce with it okay fully engaged i will teach the whole dance to you. don't it, worry we're it, all gonna it. fucking nail it it's gonna be uh-huh. a banger i guarantee it okay gm four four points away from 30 bottom line here we're gonna move on from dylan brooks but dylan brooks has been nothing less than a stud an mvp for the rockets you don't get these two wins without dylan brooks in my opinion absolutely you start the season Oh, and five. Possibly going zero and five. Uh-huh. I think the 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 points he scored, the defensive uh, triggers that he makes on defense, and the impact that he has on the floor and off the floor in the locker room and the camaraderie amongst the team is uh, something that you can't count on. Uh, last yeah. thoughts here before we move on. on 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 one Dylan Brooks. You, I mean, your favorite player, obviously. <sighs> obviously, I mean, all I can say is that we're as Rocket fans, we should be happy to have someone that plays as hard as him on our roster. Uh, we should be very happy at the fact that this team convinced him to join, and we'll gladly accept it. And I'll gladly accept my slice of humble pie because uh, I was wrong, and that's totally fine. I'm proud you of know? you for taking it, though. You took it. You t- t- hey, I'm not a stubborn. L- I'm not a stubborn mule. Take I'll the take L on my the L's. If the take team the is winning, the we'll go. gladly take my L's. But the same can't be said for all the ninkin poops on Twitter. Wow, ninkin poops. That's what we're gonna call them. Yeah. Rap scallion. I was born in 1989, call? guys. I have Nincompoops. old man saying We are right there. literally out here. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna nip that shit in the bud. We are 181 episodes in. Thank he you. Drops a nincompoop reference. Show did. GM, let's talk about last game right now. Let's 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 focus and hone in on it. 107-89. A lot of a lot of a lot of high moments. Uh, definitely some low moments. That third quarter was, bleh, it, was it, it was it was rough. I literally I think I put out a tweet saying with the poking stick emoji of the Houston Rockets. And I was like, off Rockets offense, come on, do something. Mm-hmm. Like they were not. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't the most. It was. It was a horrendous game. Like right. But- uh, was it the game, the last game you said, yeah. right? Yeah, it was a horrendous third yeah, quarter. Yeah, Sacramento, Sacramento versus Houston. GM, what is your quarter. What is your immediate thoughts on that Sacramento Houston Houston game? Because um, we are going to go have a home and home. It's a two game mm-hmm. series. We're going to yeah. play against them again on Monday. So, mm-hmm. what overall thoughts of the last game and the last win? It was a game of runs. I mean, the first half the Rockets played very well. I mean, they started off the first quarter shooting like what seventy one percent, sixty seven percent. They finished that quarter out, and they scored a uh, season high. I'm assuming uh, for points in the first quarter. Yeah, thirty nine points to finish the first yeah, quarter. The team looked great, and the team was hitting on all cylinders. And then the second quarter came, and the Kings are doing what the Kings do. Uh, they have a high powered offense as well. They were the third seed last year for a reason, but also they were playing without De'Aaron Fox, so it's fair. But this is still a very good team and deserve uh, to be respected. 
The lead obviously was squandered a little bit. But once he played in the third quarter— Oh, well, we lost the lead in the third. The, the third was <laughs> we just— We lost the, the lead. The third, the offense was just terrible. Yeah. I mean, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it, but the team was just downright horrible uh, in the third quarter. But coming to the fourth quarter, if this was last year, this team would have folded easily. Easily would have folded. But this is a different team, a different tenure, and a different head coach running this squad. And this team came out guns ablazon purely in the fourth quarter, led by Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Vliet. I think for me, what's really stood out, mm-hmm. at least based on an eye test alone, yeah. uh, especially these last two these last two games, but last game in particular, was, uh, and I think he doesn't get enough, I don't, th- well, no, I take it back. He gets a lot of love. Yeah. Like, he does get a lot of love around, like, Rockets fans and mm-hmm. international fans as well. And that's yeah. one opera in Shingun. Um, I just, you know, just, he was shot 7 of 13, 1 of 3 from 3, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals. He only had 2 turnovers, which is very vital. 15 points. He was a, he was a team high plus 27 when he's on the floor. Mm-hmm. I, I think what stood out to me, though, so the, I'm, I'm giving you the stats, but if you're watching, actual watching the game, Alperin Shangun's man defense in the post mm-hmm. has been phenomenal. Yeah. I don't think he's getting enough love for that. Mm-hmm. He's holding his ground. He's, you know, he's going to get scored on every now and then because he's just not the most athletic guy. Um, however, he is standing his ground. He's staying vertical, and he's not getting into a lot of foul trouble, which which people, you know, that, that tends to be a... That tends to be a crux for big for big men, especially big men that are like trying to slower find slower footed and slower and footed sense, will yeah. tend to get like foul calls. And Alperin Shangun has not gotten a lot of you know he's been able to to bring that down. Turnover went down at least from last game, and he's been able to kind of compensate for that. So because we knew he was a wizard on offense, but the fact that what he's able to do on the defensive end uh-huh. is what's making me be like, okay, I think Alpi's starting to like get it now. I think he's starting to get it, and if he can put two and two together and and continue that trend of consistent post defense uh switch uh a switch defense he's gonna get cooked like it's just how it's, his his perimeter defense isn't top notch i mean he's just not laterally quick yeah but if he can continue that post defense just keep the hands up stay vertical avoid foul trouble you're looking at you're looking at you know another could be total package center yeah and and i never thought Alp could get to that level then he's literally proving me wrong right now mm-hmm. which goes to show once again the ime udoka effect yeah is in full force right here. Uh, GM thoughts on Anapur and Shengun? Uh, he's been very impressive. I'll say that. Uh, you know, my expectations coming to the season, I wasn't too sure that was going on, but um, I could say that he is slowly bringing me back into being a believer. The guy's playing very. That well. was your guy. Stand uh, yeah, on, no, stand you, on you, end. Call, bro. You call that on well because you did because you are. You talked about time. it. The receipts are there. Yeah, yeah. I've, You've uh, talked about absolutely. it. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's you loved it, him. It's totally still fine, love him. You know. Um, the, there are obvious limitations on the defensive end, but they are improving. Uh, it's up to Ime to put LP in situations that will allow him to succeed. But I guess it also helps playing against someone like Sabonis, who's just not is the same way in terms of athleticism for LP. He doesn't have to laterally move as crazily. Um, it allows him to stay in front of someone like Demontis De because they both have very similar games. And I think that helps in terms of Al P. He played very well and very calm last night. Uh, I was very impressed with that part of his game. And like you stated, the personal fouls, that's huge. As a big man and being able to stay on the floor, that matters. That shit goes a long, long way. And that shouldn't be underappreciated um, in our eyes in terms of people that look at box scores. The personal fouls, the turnovers, those are a big deal. And only... Was it only two turnovers last night? Let me tell you something. That's, that's big. big. For LP, that's, that's huge. That's fucking huge. Because it shows a lot more control in terms of what he's uh, doing on the floor. So that's kind of like, that's that's what we ask, you know? But the team themselves seem like they're starting to find that control. And it's very impressive. You know, there's a lot of calmness to them. I mean, the, like I said, it's a game of runs. No matter who you play, teams will get their runs. And... The thing about this year's Rockets is that a lot of teams have gotten runs off, but the Rockets have combated, and they've been able to come back and fight to try to grab leads or stay in the game. They put, they've put they've allowed to keep themselves in, in these games. I mean, four out of the five games that they've played in were relatively close games. So it's very impressive. Uh, tip cap 
to Ime Doka for what he's done with this team and turning it around. And, you know, it, there, there's still going to be some growing pains, but this is a great start to uh, this first five games of the year. Basketball is a game of attrition. And I remember you vividly saying that, especially when we had Chris Against Paul the and James Warriors Harden. Series. Yeah. Yeah. It was a battle of attrition. Always. But especially this team trying to find their footing as winners, that I think that's going to end up being like the biggest key point is just winning the battle of attrition. Because like the GM stated, teams are going to go on runs. Teams are going to go on. Uh, we saw the Kings go on their run. The Rockets opened the game last game, opened with a 17-point lead, which evaporated. I'm pretty much used to it at this point. If you watch Rockets basketball in the last three years, you'll get it. Um, if not, uh, you know, you know, you hit him with the, oh, I hit him with the James Franco first time. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's just one of those. Like, yeah. you know, you're just not, you mm-hmm. just, you'll get used to it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Time happens, but the ability to win the battle of attrition and then once you get that lead once you know that you're gonna get the lead give up the lead get the lead back and sustain Mm -hmm. yeah and that's what they were able to do last game and i think that is what ime is trying to instill into this team put it together find the pieces that work um obviously um finding the rotations that work because you know he's still trying to find that balance and that right rotation yeah. well, i mean he wants a nine man rotation uh, right but he's able to he had to expand now due to injuries but there will be adjustments as time goes on uh there will probably be a deal or two made uh in order to oh, shore these, up this that team, bench I'll, and, I'll go so far as to say this i think if this team makes i think they're one big trade away from making a t- mark? No, not even making a mark. Like I think they're one big trade away from contention. I think they're I think they're close. Contention and not what? contention for a championship. Sorry, okay. not contention for a championship. Playoff I'm not going contention. that far. But like no, I like legit. You know my 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 ceiling is six. I really believe that they're going to be the sixth seed. I think they can really. I think That's that fair. becomes more than a realistic shot if they're. I think they're one big trade away. And I think they're no, one big trade away from surprising everybody. The goal and is I think to... if they can nail that trade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If they can nail that trade, you're looking at a completely different team from what we've seen the last three years, yeah. and you're looking at a possible, a possible top six, maybe squeeze into the top five. <laughs> you never know. I think it's depending on who they get. Yeah, obviously, ab- absolutely. And I love your positivity, but we just have to we have to remember here, guys. Can't get too high, can get too low with this current team. Uh, this is a great high that we have currently, but we have to understand that there's still going to be a process. We're going to lose stupid games because some of, some of these guys cannot stay hot forever. So it's going to happen. We're just going to have to remember that, um, you know, that this team is still under a growth phase. And it's totally fine. Like Growth phase? We're good with Are that. they, though? They are? Absolutely. No, no, they're fully grown. We're ready. We out here. We out here. They're two and three in the first five games, boys. I'm fucking in. Like, I'm all in now. Like we're fucking. I, I get in. it. I get I'm it. I'm doing the Dylan I mean, Brooks you know. dance. I'm fucking Jabari's my son. <laughs> fucking doing work. I'm not even talking about him. Uh, Jalen Green's Jalen Green eh, slowly tech hey, ticking tacking it out. Fred Van Vliet. You're, we're fucking killing the game. You're, right you're, now. Do, you're doing it. That's cool. I'm gonna live day by day. We're good. That's by that, that. That sounds like a you thing. All right. That I'm, I'm, totally all, I'm fucking thing. all in, guys. We're six seed. It's fucking coming. Uh huh. Can I give a special shout out to one player in particular that's not getting like enough love at all? Give it to us. Fucking Jay Sean Tate is shooting the ball. He is hooping. My man is averaging fifty five percent from three. Yeah, the man has been. He's he's been he's we've, been having we've confidence. Heard it before. I've heard the myth. I've heard them. Sorry, I, I was gonna say I heard the myth. The, we've heard the myth before about uh-huh. him practicing corner threes. Yeah, and it's finally coming into fruit, 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 fruition. 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 fruition yeah. Sorry. Go on. Yeah, I am a math fruitician. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, but yeah, I mean, the man shot three of three last night from three. He looked really good. He's very fantastic. confident in yeah. stepping into his shot, and you can tell he's not short of confidence whatsoever. And playing twenty one minutes last night, Ime Doka has the utmost confidence in having Jay Sean Tate on the floor. And Jay Sean Tate is what you would consider another backup point guard. He's not a point guard, more so a point forward. But he is someone that can control the offense if need be in certain moments. And that is, you know, that's as good as it can get. Uh, Jay Sean Tate, I feel like he's a staple fit for a coach like Ime Yudoka. And if he's able to shoot the ball like this, obviously he's not going to shoot three of three from three every night. But Ime Yudoka is going to keep him on the floor if he's playing this well. And I'm very happy to see Jay Sean Tate on the other side of 
someone that came from like the worst aspects of this team oh, he's playing seen it in all. 2020. He's seen it all. To now. The so, struggle hey, is man, real. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to you for, for being that he's guy for us currently. Staying with us, man. Okay, like, because that's that's the thing for me is that Jay Sean has fucking seen <laughs> every bit of it. And I think if he can average like 40%, it's like, God, that's a dream. I don't think it's going to happen. I think like high 30s. From three, you're looking at like you're looking at a very serviceable player. High thirties is great. Yeah, high thirties is great. I can ask for anything more. GM, I mean, he's the he's the sixth man. He's the sixth man off the bench. Essentially, he's yes, essentially the sixth yeah, man off the bench, which is crazy because Jay Sean on other teams is a starter. Mm-hmm. So really, having him as a sixth man really helps. Uh, helps like well, already the depleted bench, the bench that's literally been a struggle the first five games of the season. Imagine how bad they'd be without Jay Shante. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. just goes to show how important he is. Kind of also the extension of, like, a ball handler. We know he can handle the ball. Yeah. We know he can take the ball down the court. He does have a little bit of vision. Um, The fact that you can kind of bring him onto the court and, like, have him kind of, like, work off of Fred Van Vliet, work off of Jalen Green. Jay Sean Tate's just a plug-and-go guy. You can plug him in on any point any minute of the game and he'll fucking do his thing. Yeah. So I'm just happy that he's on the other side and he's finally looking at W's. I don't even want to look at Jay Sean Tate's record. Mm-hmm. Like, as a Houston Rocket. It's probably, I mean, it's the same record as Steven Silas. Yeah, it's so terrible. So that's, that's horrendous. So I'm, I'm happy for him that he's finally getting on the, on the outs of it. GM, we have to obviously do our, uh, we also, yeah, sorry, I couldn't even get my words out. We get to do our Dog of the Week right now, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Dog of the Week, obviously. I mean, it... I mean, it could be my son Jabari Smith Jr. for one because he's been fucking hooping. My dude's average. My dude's been uh, scoring. I think he scored uh, at least a, f- a little less than forty points in the last two games. Yeah. Um. He's just been a killer. Uh. That I, that meme I've been posting. Get ready to learn basketball today. Like <laughs> you know, get ready to learn basketball today, buddy. Yeah. Like he's been a killer. Uh. Obviously, Alperin Shangoon. Um. He's gonna garner some dog of the weeks. I'm sure at some point. Mm-hmm. But guys. Let's be real. There's only one dog of the week. There's only one D A W G dog of the week goes to Dylan Brooks, man. That's it goes that's, to that's the fucking villain. Yeah. By far, easily, no questions asked. Mm-hmm. Dylan Brooks has been everything and then some, which we spot. I gave him a whole entire segment dedicated to him. Yeah. Um,. There's no more that we need to say other than the fact that he's fucking earned his stripes already on this team. And Dog of the Week honors goes to him. I think he's, uh, we've had two and he's won. He's two for two now. He's undefeated. He's yeah. the defending. He's the defending. He's the reigning. Defending. Dog of the Week. Kellen Brooks. Like, dude, yeah. he is reigning, defending. Yo, I am daring the Houston Rockets. Someone, come and take it. Please, take, take, take the title from him. Yeah. Please take the title away from him. We're trying. Uh-huh. We're trying. Well, who's gonna who's gonna be the new dog of the week? I'm I'm waiting. Come on, someone come and take it. <laughs> so I'm excited, guys. Uh there's a lot of fun stuff happening, obviously, with this Houston Rockets team. They're one game away from five hundred GM. Let's go ahead and preview this next game. Sacramento mm-hmm. Kings. The time this episode comes out, we're gonna play Sacramento Kings and uh, you know, home and home, a little yeah. home and home action, two game yeah. series. Uh GM, give me your score prediction right now. Uh, give me, give, yeah, give me your score prediction right now. What you want to see happen? What I want to see happen is the team hoop again. I want to see, even though people are going to comment on Jalen Green uh, not playing so hot, he was two of seven from the free throw line. He only scored ten points. Um, I mean, he has fifteen we, points if he goes seven for seven. We all have, <laughs> we all have. Um, what's the word? We have certain expectations of someone like a Jalen Green, who was the number two overall pick. Yeah, and. Some people can say that he did not play well. He was not aggressive. But if you saw the interviews from last night where they interviewed Amy Udoka and uh, Fred Van Vliet about Jalen, and they said that he is making the correct reads, he is doing the best he can on the court and allowing the game to come to him as opposed to him trying to take from the game. And it shows a maturity from him. He's not getting the numbers that he might want, but the fact that he is making the right passes and the right reads uh, on this team, he had his... He had his uh, imprints all over the game at the end, but it just wasn't on the scoring end. It's not going to reflect on the box score, but for Jalen, that's a, that's a maturity thing. Trying to understand, like, hey, I want to affect this game positively. I want to affect this game in a winning manner. And if winning doesn't include you scoring, then it's totally fine. But I'm going to say this. I think Jalen has a recovery game Monday. He's going to play a lot better in terms of his shooting. He's... N- He's not going to miss five free throws, I'll tell you that. 
but that's kind of my expectations. Um, but with, with everyone else on the team, I do expect uh, more production. I don't expect us to be as hot, but the team is going to still play well. They should be riding that confidence and understand they already beat the Kings. They can beat the Kings again. It's just hard to do it two times in a row. It's happened. Yeah, it's hard to beat. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But it's a series. Absolutely. Uh, but score it, prediction. It, obviously, if Darren Fox comes back, right, then it can change the whole dynamic of the game. But that remains to be seen. Right. Score prediction. I will say 112-105 Houston. Oh, 112-105 Houston? Yep, I went. I With went De'Aaron Fox coming back? Uh, yes. Ooh, I, okay, I, I, think I like that. that. I like that. This team like is the riding confidence. the wave, and I think that we get it up. All right, well, at least for me, my I want Dylan to continue to terrorize the league. That's a, that's a key point. I think uh, that's what I want to continue to see, I want to continue to see my son fucking do work again yeah, i mean yeah. he's been on a fucking tear by the way guys it would take a quick sidestep here just because mm-hmm. you you mentioned something really interesting because you said jalen green like obviously he hasn't been performing well you know what we need what we may need for him there seems to be a trend when jabari was really down on himself especially the san antonio game he's mm-hmm. fucking turned up he took the l on the chin he took the interviews and he said you know this is the most down i've ever been i need to play better and then he fucking came out mm-hmm. and he's been pretty he's been money these last three games and then Another example, Fred Van Vliet. He took the L on the chin. Shot mm-hmm. 2 of 13 against Golden State. He said, I didn't play my best. Like, they need better out of me, da-da-da. Admitting, admitting it, holding himself accountable, and fucking doing work. Jalen, just get on the front of a fucking camera. Take some questions. Take the L on the chin. Hold accountability, and maybe you'll fucking go off. I'm yeah. telling you. Maybe that's the trend. Maybe, Maybe yeah. that's the trend. Yeah. Get on the fucking camera. Yeah. And just, and just you know, come on, come on the show. Talk <laughs> about how you can play better. And then maybe you can fucking do work. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I know he's not gonna. I know he's not gonna do that. But however, um, all jokes aside, I do feel like Jalen's gonna be much better. Um, Agreed. He's too good. He's yeah. just too good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fred's continue. I think Fred and LP needs to continue to be a model of consistency. LP's hook has uh, from uh, you know uh, what is it seven <coughs> to seven feet and under, like seven to ten feet and under has become just uh, has become just a almost marksman. automatic. Yeah, yeah. All- automatic. Mm-hmm. Um, Fred just calming down that offense. These two really need to be pillars in terms of consistency. Um, that's what's led to the Rockets' wins. Uh, and consistency doesn't need to be just offense. Offense, defense, uh, flow of the game. Yeah. Uh, continue to trust your teammates. I think that's big. Uh, Dylan, obviously, you know, I want him to come out hot. Uh, Jay Sean continuing to lead that bench unit because they're fucking depleted. So Jay Sean's going to be very key here. Yeah. His minutes are going to be very vital. Seeing what he does, low key, you know, who also needs to do big things. Not big things, but just needs to be a little bit more consistent, which would help the bench tremendously. Jock Lawndale. I need to see more. I need yeah, we to see do. We more from do. my, from my he Australian. Hasn't, he hasn't played very well. I need to see more out of my Australian, mm-hmm. you know, hero. So I need to see a little bit more. So, um, GM, you got 112-105. I'm going to say... I'm going to say 118. God, 118 again. Yeah, dog, we're 2-0. and up. Okay. So I'm sticking with it. What the fuck you think I am? What the fuck you think I am? Come on. 118, 112. Houston Rockets extend the win streak. We get to 500, and we're fucking dancing. That's what we're doing, boys. We're Boys and girls, we're going to fucking go. Mm-hmm. It's going to be great. Yeah. I am ecstatic at the play right now. Mm-hmm. Justin, do we have a basketball team? I think we do. I think, I, think we we have a, I think we got a basketball team, guys. By and God, I, we have a basketball yeah, team. Yeah, and I think this team's going to make a run. I mean, I don't think we're going to make a crazy run. That's, that's, let's hold the horses a bit. But this team can hover around 500. There's a lot of potential there for that to happen, especially with the schedule. Well, let me rephrase that. The schedule is tough. Let's not get it twisted. Yeah, November's we a We got little, a lot of winning teams schedule. coming through to Toyota. But the good news is that we are going to be in Toyota. So a lot of these guys get to sleep in their own bed. They get to stay in the comfort of their homes. And they'll probably end up playing a bit better. If we lose some close games to some of these really great teams like Denver, the Lakers, the Mavericks, that happens. you know. And so let me just have to remember to keep perspective here and understand that there are a lot of teams that are you know in the upper echelon of standings in the, on the in the Eastern or Western Conference. So just keep the expectations at bay, but understand that we want to see improvement, and the improvement has already begun. Uh, so I'm good. I think we can get to 3-3 three and three tomorrow and then prepare for the Lakers Wednesday. Okay, it sounds good. You can you can, you can can stay on that lane. We're going 79-3 and three the rest of the season. I'm fucking riding this shit. I, like I don't give confidence. a. F- I don't give a fuck about it. Anyway. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm not being serious, guys. But but really, like uh-huh. GM, he he keeps his he likes to keeps his feet on the ground. I like to soar as 
as high as the sky can take us. Like I, I really, truly, and I believed it to my core that this team, if they can hit everything on the right cylinder, if they can get a big piece, especially in the trade deadline, the sixth seed is not as out of reach as people think it is. Yeah. I think 45 to 47 wins can get you there. Man, I, 45 wins. I think, I, I think we can get there. I think we can get there. Like I said, Ooh, that certain man. things have to happen, obviously. But like I said, the crux is everything has to fall into place. Yeah, that's fair. That's the crux. Fair. That's the high side. I didn't mm-hmm. say high side, we're going to be the one seed. Like, I never yeah, said that. Yeah, the high yeah, side yeah. is six seed. Mm-hmm. So, guys, this is going to be very exciting times here. We're excited. I cannot wait. I, it's gotten to the point where, like, I'm starting to, like, count down days now. Like, I haven't yeah. felt like this in years. I'm like, yo, man, can you get... Can you have any more of them Rockets basketball? Like, oh like that's where I'm at right now. <laughs> Tyrone Bigham. Tyrone Bigham. It's Chappelle show. It was a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> All right. Uh, GM, let's give the people what they want as our producer gives the go home cue. Give the people what they want right now before we end the show. Sounds good. Uh, follow me on Twitter at JP underscore Marabueno. Make sure to follow our podcast on Twitter and TikTok at Summit, S-O-M-P-O-D. Make sure to follow the podcast on Instagram at Summit State of Mind underscore POD. Uh, make sure to follow our people, our team, our brothers at Apollo NBA and at Apollo HOU. Uh, be sure to super kick that subscribe button to ensure that you guys get notifications and are able to watch your favorite Houston Rockets podcast via YouTube. And you can follow me on Twitter as well at Summit Commission. Shouts to the Apollo Podcast Network brethren that continue to mm. kill the game. Off season time for the Houston Nationals, but we all know the crown jewel of Houston Nationals Podcast Beyond yeah. the Diamond. Be sure to give them a listen one time. Houston Texans are literally playing right now. So while you while you're reviewing the game, oh actually no, we post it on Monday. Well, if you want to continue to watch your favorite Houston Texans content, be sure to, to watch. Uh, go ahead and watch Off the Gridiron on Apollo HOU YouTube. Uh, Off the Gridiron at Apollo Texans for all your Texans content. Shout outs to the One Take Podcast at Apollo Pop Culture for all your TV show, movie, and music needs. Once again, we thank each and every one of y'all for making us your first listen for all Houston Rockets content. Uh, 180 plus episodes are now in the book right now as we inch closer to 200. Uh, GM, it's such an exciting time to be a Houston Rockets fan, and we hope uh, that all of y'all can continue with us on this journey as we, you know, get ourselves right and get ourselves ready for contention to Mm -hmm. whether it be this season or next season or a couple seasons down the road. But we're just happy that we can continue to present our content to y'all. We appreciate y'all for giving us your first listen for all Houston Rockets content. So let's go ahead and end this episode as we end every episode with a go summit go apollo your houston rockets are two and three uh, knocking on the door right now for 500 ball go rockets oh and also watch basketball